Hey guys, it's Hannah and I'm here today with my 2021 reading stats. So I thought I really love seeing these videos and for the first time ever I have actually followed like a book tracker to track all of my reading throughout the whole year. I always do the like Goodreads ones but I have never done like an in-depth goal tracker. So Allie over at the Hardback Quarter, lovely human being who made this tracker in 2021. I actually stuck to it, which is just mind-blowing to me. And I'm so glad I did because I love seeing all these stats. So you guys will be seeing this stuff up here. So far this year, I want to physically read my TBR, like our um, book club book books. Because I always get more enjoyment out of things that I physically read versus doing audiobooks, but audiobooks just tend to be easier for me. So I want to make, like, try to physically read my book club books for the Shelf Indulgence. Speaking of, just gonna quickly throw this in here. The Shelf Indulgence book club, we meet every month. It's Gabby and I from Gab's About Books. We are <laughs> IRL best friends and we met online. So we love doing this because it keeps us connected and it's just a lot of fun because we have very similar reading tastes and it's it's fun. So these are the books that we are picking for our book club. So if you guys want to join along, feel free. I will put like a little infograph up here and I'm just gonna be reading them off my phone. For the month of January, we are reading The Mistake by Elle Kennedy and that one is gonna be on my channel. Then we are gonna dig into From Blood and Ash, uh, the Jennifer L. Armentrout books. Uh, this has gotten a lot of hype on TikTok and we are a little behind on the trend. And so we're just like, you know what would be fun? Like we haven't done a series read through in a while. So we decided this one and we're gonna give it a go. So the first one's gonna be over on Gabby's channel. Kingdom of Flesh and Fire is gonna be on my channel for uh, March. And Crown of Gilded Bones is gonna be on Gabby's channel for April. The next one we are gonna be doing is She Gets the Girl. I am so excited for this. It looks so damn cute and it sounds, it sounds adorable. It's like with like roller skating girls and it's a woman loving woman relationship and I'm hyped for it. This is definitely a, I am making Gabby read this because I am so excited for this one. So I definitely am looking forward to this one. That's gonna be in May over on my channel. And then we are continuing the series um, from Kaylin Byron, which is This Wicked Fate, and that's gonna be over on Gabby's channel on in June, and we're very excited about that. So if you haven't read This Poison Heart, or The Poison Heart, This Poison Heart, I highly recommend reading it. Uh, it's fantastic, just in general, but feel free to read it and then uh, read the second one with us because we are very excited for that. So just wanted to quickly Put that in here if you guys want to join us. We would love to have you. It's always a fun time and we've had some really good books um, in 2021. So, so let's go over my stats for this year of what I like all got read. So in total, and I'm gonna be looking off screen a little bit because this is where I've got my computer propped up here. Um, I, in 2021, I read 3,483 pages. I listened to 508 hours worth of audiobooks. I definitely consume most of my books through audiobooks these days. I only purchased three, 36 books, which is very, like, restrained for me. I work in a bookstore, so you know, and that includes like things that I bring home that publishers send bookstores. So I think this is amazing for me because there's a reason why I have a whole bookshelf. Like I have problem buying books and I really held back this year. So yeah, I read 83 books this year, which I'm very proud of. For me, like it was a rough year in 2020. because I like just, just read 51 books and my goal was 50. Um, this year my goal was 50 and I ended up reading 83 books. So I'm very pleased with myself with that. Um, and only 13 of those were rereads. So that's pretty darn good for me because I definitely like once I start a reread, especially like if I'm rereading like Vampire Academy, I'll go through the whole damn thing and I'll pick up Bloodlines, which is what I think I did this year and that's where most of those rereads came from. But I, I go comfort, like rereads are such a comfort thing for me and I do it quite often. So the fact that I only read 13 out of the 83 is very impressive for me. <laughs> Some other stats, definitely fall time is the best for me for reading. And 
summer is very much the worst. So um, June is not too bad, but once July and August hit, that really dwindled down quite significantly. Um, that's because most of the time that I'm like, I, it's beautiful here <laughs> during those months and it's not like too hot. It's like the perfect weather for me, like in Oregon for that time. And so we're like out doing things as much as possible, exploring Oregon, exploring like outside nature and going on hikes and playing outside. Um, so this is definitely where a lot of my time goes. And so when I am, when it gets colder and rainier, it's not like always the best to go hiking out in the rain all the time. <laughs> so it's definitely perfect time to pick up books. And that's where you'll see the majority of my reading got done in September and October. And I'm not surprised about that. This is kind of my star rating lineup here. So most of the stuff that I read, it tends to be four stars. I have 26 four star books, seven 4.5 stars, 16 five stars, which is pretty good considering, um, 17 3.5 stars, three three stars, three 2.5 stars, and two two stars. I never re rate anything like a one <laughs> because there's never like, I mean, unless it's horrific, it t takes a lot to get like a one star for me because there's, I can always find some type of like redeeming quality or things that I like about it. So it's never like, this is the worst book I've ever read. Granted, I don't read books that I think are gonna be horrible. So that's also ties into that. I'm sure if I went on my way to go read like a political book, I'm sure I would hate it because that is not my forte. So one that's not rated because I didn't feel like it was my place to rate it because I was not the demographic. So I wasn't sure how. I would much rather have books that deal with hard topics. In this one in particular, I believe it was a trans book and or a, a character with trans main character and I was seeing a very different types of reviews so I would rather not have my opinions adding onto the noise I'd rather promote own voice like ratings on Goodreads so I just didn't rate it but I did read it so this is something I did not realize I did and that's I mostly read if it's not <laughs> if it's not one a reread or like besides rereads when I'm running a new book, it is usually either in the current year that we are in or the year previous. If it's not one of those two years, it's not likely that I'm gonna read it. And I did not realize that was my reading habit until reviewing these results. So that is something that I'm planning on doing this year is going through my backlist and re-evaluating if things still bring me joy or interest in here. And then I'm gonna purge my to be read shelves because there's some stuff on here that I just don't think I'm gonna get to. I'm no longer interested in. And these results pretty much like secure it that especially if it's a super old backlist title, I probably won't get to it. So 32 books were from 2021, 23 books were from 2020, and then we've got just like a range here. And I'm thinking a lot of that range is probably my rereads because those come out like yearly. So that's something interesting that I didn't know before tracking it. And that is definitely something I'm gonna take into consideration. For the genres that I read, I was actually quite surprised. I really thought romance was gonna take it out of the ballpark for me. Uh, romance just squeaked out past my fantasy. So I read 27 romances this past year and 25 fantasy. That is the majority of the books that I read. Um, I do have a few like 13 contemporary that's not really romance um, but you could almost clump those in. I did read nine graphic novels which I definitely thought there was way less than nine graphic novels. One historical fiction, one humor or one horror, one poetry book, one mystery, and two nonfiction. This year I am really curious to see how that one's gonna shake out because I do feel myself reading more and more romance um, just because that's the easiest to listen to with audiobooks and I find that fantasy is harder to listen to with audiobooks because oftentimes when I'm listening to audiobooks I am doing something else, I'm multitasking, so it's not as easy to pay attention to all the nitty-gritty details of uh, world building and all that stuff if I am doing other things. Fantasy definitely tends to be ones that I need to physically read. So that should be interesting. I am working on doing a lot more physical reading this year and I'm wondering how that is going to change up 
um, these stats. So we will compare uh, next year. These are the total of where I got my books. I do read a ton from my library. I really utilize that I constantly champion go to your local library. They have such a good selection, especially on audiobooks. And it's like free for most places to do audiobooks if you're like within the jurisdiction. Highly recommend. So I did have two books from Audible. Um, that is before I switched over to Libra with M. Another thing that I constantly champion, if you are an audiobook consumer, check out Libra FM. Amazon doesn't need any more of our money and Libra FM, you get to choose an independent bookstore to support. It is the exact same price as Audible, which is Amazon and Libra FM really helps out individual bookstores. You get to choose which bookstore your money and credits go to and they have very similar catalogs. The only thing that Libra FM doesn't have that audio like Audible does is Audible does have Audible exclusives, which is hard to argue with. But it's I find that it's I don't use really Audible exclusives that much and I'd much rather give my money to local independent bookstores. So that's something that I, I really um, started this year and I really champion. So I did get four of my audiobooks from Libra FM this year. Um, 31 of my books I got from the library. Most of those are audiobooks and 45 of them are from my own TBR, which I'm very proud about that I actually, you know, read the books that I bought. <laughs> and then one was sent from a publisher, which is just what I get at work. This stat also surprised me. So I just assumed that everything that I read is mainly series. I've always thought that I was like a series reader. I wasn't a standalone reader. So when these stats, I pulled these up, I was really surprised that this is the way that it shook out. So I do read mostly part of the series, but it was not anywhere near as much as I thought it was compared to the standalone. So I've read 38 books that were part of a series, 29 of them are standalone, um, nine of them are companion novels, and there are seven of them that I wasn't sure if it was continuing or not. So, but I was very surprised at that shake up with that. And here just quickly, uh, a little bit of author stat. These ones are a little bit hard. I try to do my due diligence on what they prefer if they go by she they or he they i will do whatever is the first pronoun that they put in their twitter bio instagram whatever as anywhere i can find it if i don't know i put unknown if they don't say they them but they say transgender then i put transgender instead of they them if they say like non-binary and they don't have a pronoun in their their profile then that's where the the they that's where they unknown will come into play so my author identity, just a quick breakup here. I mostly read from women. It is 68 authors that I read from um, go by she, her. Uh, 10 go by he, him. Uh, two go by they, them. Two are transgender and one is unknown. And with that, the also the status, five of these authors were debut. 47 I have read from before and 31 are new to me. So I think that's a pretty good like break up too is that like I like branched out and read people that I've not read before so I'm, I'm pretty pleased about that and also at the end of the year I did like I told you guys brought I bought 36 books total um in the year and I actually read 50% of the books that I bought within that same year so I'm pretty proud about that too um and I've got a lot of um ones on the docket already like planned to um, come into play for 2022, so they will get read. <laughs> so that is it for my 2021 wrap up of my reading stats. I am hoping to really get this down in 2022. So definitely, like I, my official goal is to get it underneath 100. I'm currently at 132 books. I'm really trying to get it underneath um, 100 books by the end of the year, which I feel like is doable if I, one, stop buying books, and two, I read the books that I have. Like, I need to make a concerted effort to get through there. So, that is gonna be it for this video. Let me know down below what your guys' reading goals are for 2022, and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.